With you, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 12. Ian Samuel, hoofstuk 12. En um, ek het lekker vir die Heere gelag hierdie week. Ek en hy, ons het so binnen pret gehad. Um, uh, because when he laid this sermon on my heart this, this week, I said to him, Lord, is it because I'm going away uh, for, for two weeks, Lord willing? Because I want to talk to you about prayer. Gebed. And uh, I haven't got sermon points, so there's no three points this morning. I'm just going to tell you the story, and I'm going to raise out the need for prayer. And, and I said to the Lord, Lord, is it because I'm going away? Are you trying to tell me that I need to pray for these people while I'm away? Because while the cat's away, the you know what the mice do, eh? So, ek onderneem, my kant af, vir julle te bid, terwijl ek weg is. Ek kon nie neem, excuse. Ek kon nie neem om vir julle te bid. Maar ek wil, my hart is vol met hierdie woord vir oog en ek, ek voel ek moet het vir julle gee en is so van pas op so veel vlakke en ek denk aan Gerrit en Machtel wat weggaan en, en hoe gebed een verskil vir hulle gemaakt. Ek denk aan, aan families wat, wat, ek denk aan, aan die Jofnes en, en, en Katrine en Ewit en hoe hulle gebed nodig het op hierdie stadium, met die afsterwe van oom Ben. Ek dink aan, aan, aan ons land, ek dink aan die regering, ek dink aan die goeie nies wat ons elke dag in die korante ontvang, uh, soos wat jy hulle oopmaak en loop jou haar van blijdschap en dankbaarheid door alles wat recht gaan en alles wat goed gaan in ons land op hierdie stadium, al die, al die sektore. So, jy weet, die, die, die kracht van gebed is... The, the power of prayer is needed now like never before. But I, 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 as I say that, I think of so many people come to me and they, and they tell me a situation and then they, they come there and they want me to give them hope. And, and my answer is, you don't have a prayer, brother. Have you heard that statement? You don't have a prayer. You, know, you haven't got a, a chance. Yeah. You know? The young guy, he hasn't brushed his teeth for a week, but he, he asks me to pray for him as he goes and asks the girl out on it. You haven't got to pray. Ze gaan hy asem reik en ze gaan een meil hart loop. As jyker een goed wat jy weet, jy het nie, you don't have a prayer. And the other thing I thought about, as I thought about this, is people say to me so often when you talk about prayer, but the Lord doesn't answer prayer. But the Lord does. The Lord answers every single prayer with three answers. Now, I've said them before, so you know them. Yes, then, then you know he's answered prayer. Other times when you say he hasn't answered my prayer, he has, he said no. And then the third one is, you've got to be kidding me. Sometimes we come to the Lord and we ask him stuff and I think the Lord just goes, what? I can't even give you a yes, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah? Let me just give you some time to go think about that prayer request again. You've you got to be kidding me. Okay? And, and, and that's, my, that's my start. Because listen to this amazing account from 1 Samuel. You'll know from, from verse 12. Samuel's the prophet to the people of Israel. And the people of Israel nag and nag and nag and nag and they want a king. And Samuel, a couple of chapters before, he goes to them and he says to them, listen, you guys are asking for a king. Do you know what a king will do? Do you know what a king will bring into your life? He's going to take your men to fight his battles. He's going he's to take 10%. In the good old days. 10% taxes to feed himself. He's going to take your children and make them work in his palace. 
And He's going to rule over you. Do you want a king? This is not a good thing. And he gets so, he, he raak so moedig, op a stadium sê die heren, hey, ophou nou, hulle het my verwerp, nie vir jou nie. They've rejected me, they haven't rejected you, get up, go and minister to them. This is the king's coronation. Who was the first king? King Saul. This is Saul's inauguration. When you saw that Nahash, the king of the sons of Ammon, came against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us, although the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore, here is your king. Who's that for a anstelling for a kwinner? I don't know how many of you watched King Charles's uh, inauguration. No one there said, well, you guys, I try to give you something better, but you wanted him, so here's your king. Uh, they didn't do that. <laughs> but that's basically what, what, what Samuel's doing here. He says, well, the Lord's your king, but you wanted another king, so here's your king. Hmm? whoop de doo now therefore, here is your king, whom you have chosen, whom you have asked for. And behold, the Lord has set the king over you. Now, let's just stop there. He's a less. For iemand die verochend. Die Heere het een plan. Vir jou en my leven. Een unieke plan. Ja? Hallo. Jullie beteken ja. The Lord's got a plan, a unique plan for your life and for my life, and He's working that plan. He's bezig op my plan, te laat uitdra. Maar ek en jy, mens wat ons is, klem op die dom, in mensdom, ons wil ons plan hee. Ons wil, ok Lord, I'm your child, I'll accept what you want, as long as it's this. The prophet says, you've got a king. An earthly king isn't going to, he's going to. We want a king. And the Lord's got a plan for your life. And he's busy shaping, he's busy moving. And what are you doing? But you must come to God. And you know what's so awesome? I read it, and I read it, and I read it. God gives them what they ask for. What have you asked for that's come back to bite you in the bum? And a year or three or six or ten later, you're saying to the Lord, Why me? Why is this happening to me? And you forget. It's not what he wanted, it's what you wanted. The friend of mine at school, first year of varsity, after my trick, we, sit and we sleep, have a sleepover. Him and myself, we sleep over in Mother Pal's house. And he meets this girl at university. And he says, guys, tonight, tonight, I'm going to ask the Lord if she's my wife, if she's the one. And he started reading his Bible. And we eventually put the light out and we went to sleep. And yeah, early in the morning, I can't remember how late it was, it was many years ago. He woke us up. He was so excited. The Lord has confirmed she's my wife. And we said, wow, okay, awesome. Yeah, like her. Good for you. And uh, later on over breakfast, we... Once we were awake and we were actually asking him, we're finding out now. I said to him, so where did you start reading? He said, no, Matthew. He said, okay, awesome. And, and what chapter in Matthew did? No, 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 he told me in Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, but I'm going to hear tonight from the Lord that this is my wife. The sad news is they divorced today. 
But the Lord gave him what he wanted. Care for what you ask for. Care for what you ask for. The Lord might just give it to you. The Lord has set a king over you. Verse 14. If you fear the Lord and you serve him and listen to his voice and not rebel against the command of the Lord, then both you and also the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God. You see, the Lord works all things out for the good of those who love him and accord according to your purpose. You, you, the Lord doesn't want to give you a king, but listen, you want a king, you get a king. Listen to the Lord, obey the Lord, don't rebel against the Lord, you and your king, you and that which you've set up in your life, submit to the Lord even though You've got these other things. Submit those things to the Lordship of God and it'll go well with you. Owens wat vraag vir baie geld en die Heere sê, ek gaan jylle een beloofde land gee. Ek gaan vir jylle alles gee. Huise wat jylle nie gebouw het, toilette wat jylle nie gegrauw het nie. Ek gaan jylle wingerde en ek gaan jylle oeste gee wat jylle nie geplant het nie. Ek gaan jylle seen, maar die dag wat jylle daar seen omvang het, herinner, onthou nie, dit het van my gekom en nie van jylle af nie. So if you want wealth and if you pray for wealth and if wealth is going to give you your sense of security, once the Lord has blessed you and given it to you, give it to the Lord. He's given you your king that you want. Listen to him. Obey him. Honor him. Put the Lord above whatever you feel you need. Make him the Lord of your marriage. Make him the Lord of the children that you prayed for. And then they became teenagers and you, want, you prayed for them to... No, okay. Listen and honor and obey the Lord in all things. And... Sure. Verse 15. If you will not listen to the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the command of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you as it was against your fathers. Kijk bykie terug in die geschiedenis, kijk bykie terug in jou lewe. Waar die Heer geseen, waar die Heer nie geseen nie. Waar het met voorspoed, waar het met teerspoed met jou gegaan. Kijk bykie terug. Verse 16, even now, Take your stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. See this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Here's your king. I don't actually want to give him to you. I don't actually think he's the best thing since sliced bread. I actually don't think you deserve him. I don't think you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. But here's your king. Honor and obey the Lord with your king and your king and you will see the great thing that the Lord will do if you will continue to submit and hear. Listen. Now listen. <laughs> Samuel was a prayer. Samuel, Samuel was a gebedsman. He had gebed. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 15 verse 1. The Lord said to Jeremiah the prophet, the Lord Jeremiah said to Jeremiah, even if Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not be with this people. Send them away from my presence and have them... What's the Lord saying? Moses and Samuel were the prayers. When Moses stood in the gap, when Moses prayed, I listened. When Samuel, remember, he's given to the Lord uh, by, his, by his mother Hannah because she had a barren womb. And she gives him to the Lord, and he's still a little boy. And for 400 years, the Lord hadn't been talking to the people. And Eli, the prophet, his sons had rebelled against the Lord. They were living in rebellion. They were living in sin. And he was doing nothing about it. And this little boy was sleeping. He has a voice. And eventually, Eli says to him, When you hear that voice again, Samuel, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And from a child... Samuel knew what it was to hear and to speak to God. So much so 
that Jeremiah gets told, even if Moses and Samuel were to intercede, were to pray on behalf of these people, I wouldn't even listen. They were prayers, never mind the rest. But even if they prayed, I wouldn't listen. (laughs) Psalm 99 verse 6. Moses and Aaron were among the Lord's priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. Imagine your name gets written in the Bible for eternity, in the history of God, and it said, and Sean. Moses and Aaron, they were the priests. And Samuel, he prayed. He called on the name of the Lord. Amazing. Samuel was a prayer. How can I say that? Let me just show you now. (laughs) This is the coronation day. This is the day of celebration. This is the day you get your king. You get your wish, Israel. Verse 17. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I weet van hulle koring hier streep. In hierdie hierdie verlei. En praat die boere van die koring reenkie. Is dit nie so nie? Net as die koring lekker goudig of wat geelig is op die lande, net as hulle begin, dan kom die eerste rinkie. En dan bid die boere dat het net een bykie droog sal wees, dat hulle kan net inkom in die koring streep, so, st, uh, uh, stroop, 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 daar is hy. Ok, dankie vir die help. Ok, we are harvest the wheat, is it not the wheat harvest. I'm establishing, I'm coronating, I'm, I'm installing your king, Israel, and it's the wheat harvest. It's the time to escape. <sighs> I will call upon the Lord that he may send thunder and rain. Then you will know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord by asking of yourselves a king. So Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. That's a prayer. This is iemand wat bid. Op a feestdag, op a dag van skep, op a dag van feestviering, hy sê, thunder and rain. I'm going to rain on your parade. (laughs) I wonder if that's not where it came from. (laughs) En die mense het gevrees. Die mense het gevrees. Vir een rede. Kom het hy dit gedoen? Hm. So glad you asked. Verse 18. Sorry, verse 19. Then all the people said to Samuel, Pray. Pray. Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, so that we may not die. For we have added to all our sins this evil by asking for ourselves a king. Listen to me, my friends. Most people in the church today pray only in crisis and disaster. They don't pray out of just praying. It's when there's a crisis. It's when there's a need. It's when there's a disaster. Wanneer daar een nood is. Wanneer ons leven voel. Wanneer ons wereld uit mekaar uitval. Dan bid ons. Ek het statistiek gelees in Amerika. Praat hulle van. Mense spandeer 24 minuute dag om hulle recht te maak vir die dag. Om aan te trek. Sam mo. Some a lot more. But anyway, let's just take the average of 24. Okay, if you live to the age of 70, it's something like, I don't know how many days in a month, but it's a year of your life you spend getting dressed. Awesome, eh? That same poll says, Christians polled and asked, how much time do they spend praying at the most, 10 minutes a day. Which equals seven months in your lifetime. You spend a year getting dressed and seven months praying. But the sad news or the reality is that poll, when they actually looked at it, because people lie, how much do you pray? Oh, five minutes every day. In reality, 
on average, people pray less than one minute a day. Except in times of crisis and disaster. We need to pray. We need to pray. Not just in times of pray, of disaster and crisis. Listen to what he says in verse 20. Samuel said to the people, do not fear. You've committed all this evil. You've committed all this evil. Yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. You must not turn aside, for then you would go after futile things which cannot profit or deliver because they are futile. For the Lord will not abandon his people on account of his great name, because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for himself. There's so much in that. There's so veel daarin. Die Heere is die een wat met voorafgaande genade uitreik na jou toe. Die woord sê vir ons, terwyl ons nog sondags was, terwyl ons nog in rebellie was, het God sy Seen gesteer om vir ons te sterf. Dis die Heere wat ons kom soek, dis die Heere wat uitreik na ons toe. Sê ons wat die Heere soek, dis die Heere wat ons soek. Then when we run in darkness and in sin, God comes looking for us. Jesus says, I've come to seek and to save the lost. God comes looking for us. The good news is, they ask the prophet to pray for them. And he says to them, listen, don't worry, I will pray for you. But you just be obedient. You just serve God. You just listen. You just hear what God wants and do it. I'll pray for you. Listen, there's easy prayers and there's hard prayers. Stem saam met my. Een makkelijke gebed is, is om, om die Heere te eer, te lof. It's easy to, to, to praise God for His good works. Father, thank you for the sunrise. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the birds. Thank you for the trees. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you. It's so easy to pray praise, isn't it? Okay? It's also easy to pray petitional prayers. What's petitional prayers? Prayers for yourself. Lord, I need help. Lord, I need, Lord, I need this. Lord, help me with this. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, help. It's easy to pray prayers for yourself. There's a big word. There's imprecatory prayers. Imprecatory prayers. What's that? That's prayers against someone else. Those are the prayers. There's 10 of them. There's 10 Psalms. Eight by David and two by, by some other guy. I can't think of his name now. Ten imprecatory prayers. That's prayers against your enemies. Your channel is rille begebeer oor. As jy die goed lees. Heere, ek haat jou vijande met die volmaakte haat. Mag hulle kinders nie erf van hulle. En, jo, daar gaan, oe, die manne hulle bid teen, die, die vijande hulle bid. Jylle het seker syke gebede al klaar in jou dagboek al geskryf. Jy is net te skam om het te bid. Maar het is ook makkelijk om die gebede te bid, is het nie so nie. Heere, mag hy gevloek wees, hy wat my my gesteel het, mag het die gee van hom af weggevat, mag hy nooit weer die son sien, skyn oor sy land nie. Ons het al die, ge- ons het al geskryf hoor, dit is makkelijke gebede raai. Die feit dat die Heere in Romeine sê, bid vir jou vijande, is nie die type gebede nie hoor, dit is een ander type. <laughs> bid vir hulle nie, ja, so leave the, but those are easy prayers. Prayers for myself, prayers where the Lord takes out my enemies. Ja, lekker. Mag hy op elke pisang skil in sy leven nie voorbij loop nie. Mag hy op elke een van hulle gulle in sy stuikie breed. Um, ja, is lekker. Daar is makkelijk om te bid. But prayers of supplication. Prayers where you intercede. Where you start praying for someone else. Those are difficult prayers. And listen to me. Those are the prayers that grandparents and parents pray out of love for their children. And this generation is losing that. We don't pray like our parents used to and even less than what our grandparents used to. We don't pray those prayers because that's this oorlogvoering. 
You, you make the Lord's name big. You, you pray for yourself. The devil leaves you alone. But commit to intercede for someone else. The phone will ring. The doorbell will go. The power will go off. Well, that happens anyway. But the devil will not hear. You must for someone else in for someone else. But that's that's spiritual warfare. And he says, "Don't worry. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you." But listen, you have to do your part. You have to be obedient. You have to hear. You have to listen. For the Lord will not abandon his people on account of his great name. Yeah. Do you hear that? And then the thing that blows me away, verse 23. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord. Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. To not pray is sin. Or not a bit a sonder. I say, jylle vrou my om te bid, ek sal vir jylle bid, want om nie vir jylle te bid, is sonder teen God, en ek gaan nie teen God sondig nie. Ek sal vir jylle intree, ek sal vir jylle bid. Hoekom is dit sonder? En dink nou net, jy sit, jy al stis, jy is die slagoffer. Sê, jy is my beste, 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 este pel. Nie este nie, maar my beste pel. Ok? Hy is my beste pel. Hy is my nummer 1 op my speed dial. Hy is die een wat ek en hy was saam in die kleeterskoel. Ja. En, en ons was maaikies van uit die doeken uit en die titiebottels en ons het saam geloop, ons het saam ge... alles. Ja, dit ook. Ons het alles saam gedoen. En hy gaan bly in Canada. Ons maak het toepasselik. Maar hy is nog steeds my beste eerste pel. En na so 6 maande hoor hy, ek was in die hospitaal, om my honde is omgeraai. My kinders is in Australia en New Zealand. My vrou is in een koume, Ek was ses maande in die hospitaal. En ek bel om en hy sê, hoe gaan hy met jou? En ek sê, nee, hy gaan nou goed hoor. Hy sê, hoe kom nou? Ek sê, want wel, my honde is omgeraai, my vrou is in die kome, my kind is het gewaai, gewaai. Ek was ziek. Ek was in die kome, ek was ziek. Maar jy is nog steeds my beste pil sê wie, ek twyfel, hoor wat sê hy, hy gaan kwaad wees, hy gaan twyfel of ons, het ons even, wat tel ons verhouding, wat tel, wat help het dat ons in doeke saam was, wat help het ons, wat, skryf jy alles af? Dit is een sonde om nie God, die verhouding wat jy met God het, jy ver, you embarrass God, You make an embarrassment of God if you don't pray. Yeah, pastor, he knows. He knows everything. Ah. The awesome thing about God is he wants us to know that he, we can talk to him, that we can call on him. And it's sinful. It's embarrassing for him if we ignore him, if we don't communicate. He says, far be it from me to sin against God by ceasing to pray for you. 
It's sin because you rob yourself of the blessing. There, Brian and Lynn sit and Lynn's friend, they prayed in the Bible study. She went home and five, ten minutes later she came back and she said, Guys, our prayers were answered. What a blessing. How didn't that strengthen your faith? How didn't that encourage you that, hey, there's prayer, there's answers in prayer, there's a God who hears. And you rob yourself of the blessing by not praying. And you rob other people of the blessing that God wants to give them by not praying. In the Old Testament, the Lord uses the analogy of standing in the gap. Ezekiel 22 verse 30, Ezekiel 22 verse 30, say, I searched for a man among them who would build up a wall and stand in the gap before me for the land so that I would not destroy it. But I found no one. But I found no one. God's still calling us to build a wall. God's still calling us to stand in the gap. Psalm 106 verse 23, Therefore he said that he would destroy them. If Moses, his chosen one, had not stood in the gap before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. So God says, I'm going to destroy them. Moses says, Lord, you can't wipe those people out. What are the nations going to say? And the Lord didn't destroy them. Wat weer hou jou? Wat sy sien weer hou jou van, van jou familie, van jou geliefdes, van jou, van jou, van die kerkfamilie? Want, omdat jy nie bid nie. Omdat jy nie bereid is om in die brest te staan nie. The rest of verse 23 says, But I will instruct you in the good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things He has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, both you and your king will be swept away. I want to close with this. Herbert Baxter was a missionary and he served on a mission field and part of the deal was he got a car. But when he arrived there, this car ran fantastically. It just would never start. And so every time he wanted to go somewhere, he would contact the people in the village and all the young guys would come out. He'd put it into second gear. He'd turn the ignition on. They would push him and the car would start and he would go away. And it went. It never cut out. It just went everywhere. When he got into the villages and into the outlying district in the, in the country and all that, he would leave it idly and he wouldn't switch it off. Or if he found a hill, he would stop on the top of a hill. So that every time he needed to get the car going again, he'd just put it in second, coast down the hill, jump the clutch, poop, there he'd go. And the car went. No problems. And after two years of doing this, two years, every time he wanted to go somewhere, villagers would come and push him. And over he'd go. And he'd stop and he'd idle and he'd what? And blah, 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 for two years. And then his replacement arrives. And uh, he's busy handing over and he says to the replacement, well, the good news is, there's an awesome, awesome car that's so reliable. It never doesn't go. It just doesn't start. So this is what you have to do. You just have to start the car with a group of people or on a hill or whatever. But other than that, it's comfortable, it's e economical, it goes. The guy says, oh, to hell with that. He says, pop the boot, pop the bonnet. And now Herbert Baxter pops the bonnet, he lifts it up. Here's a loose wire. He gets a little, puts it on the terminal thing and he tightens it. Puts it down, gets in the car, turns on the ignition. And I'll start car. For two years, Herbert Baxter had the potential to start and get going. But because of a loose connection, he suckled his backside off.
Will you pray? Do you have a loose connection? Maak die los connectie vast. Begin te bid. See what good things the Lord wants to give you. James, Jacobus, 4 verse 2. You lust and do not have, so you commit murder, and you're envious, and you cannot obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have, because you do not ask. You do not have, because you do not ask. You just don't pray. There's a loose connection. Ask and you shall. Seek and you shall. Knock and the. James 5, 13 through 16. Is anyone among you suffering? Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. He must. Pray. Is anyone cheerful? He's to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he's committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. A prayer of a righteous person, when it is brought about, can accomplish much. Father, we, we hear your word this morning. And we need to decide as, a, as an individual. We need to decide as a church. We need to decide as a family of God. We need to decide as the kingdom of God, are we going to stand? Because either we need prayer or we need to now decide to pray for someone else. And Holy Spirit, you've laid people on our hearts. You know who we need to pray for. You know where the battle needs to be won. It's on our knees. The devil, the devil isn't scared or intimidated by the cleverest theologian. But he shakes when the weakest saint gets on his knees. Help us to be a praying people. Help us to say, pray for me. Samuel, pray for me. I'm a sinner. I'm, I've, I've chosen a king. I've put something in my life instead of God. And I need to submit. I need to take that which the Lord has given me. The Lord's blessed me with it and now it's, it's taken over my life. I now live for that person or for that thing or for that business or for that balance or for that. I now live for that, but I need to submit that which you've given me to your Lordship. You need to be the king, even of my king. I need to listen. I need to obey you. I need to become a prayer. I want my name written down in the history of the church as a person like Samuel who knew to call on the Lord. What a mighty army. What a mighty army God is raising as we stand and say, I'm going to stand in the gap. Father, you know the hearts, you know the people, you know where they're at. Holy Spirit, come and work. Raise up. Raise up dads, fathers who will pray over their household. Raise up mothers who, as they, as they love and as they hold together, they will pray as well. Raise up leaders in this town, in this community. They don't just walk the talk, but they pray the life that needs to be prayed. Father, look into our hearts. So many of us need prayer. So veel van ons het gebed nodig. Kom tree in, Heere. Wees genadig. Wees liefdevol. Wees God. En antwoord ons gebede, ja, nee. Are you kidding? But answer our prayers. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise